you walk through the garden Watch your back Well, I beg you Pardon, walk the straight and narrow track If you walk with Jesus Save your soul Gotta keep the devil Down in the room He's got fire and the fury Thanks for staying with us on Iron Dependency, and we're ready to go right now to Pedro Ribeiro Agard and her take on law and authority. Hi, good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago again. So, as Natasha said, today I'll be speaking about law and authority in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, sometimes we wonder exactly what is the definition of law or what is our take on law. Now, my definition would be that law is basically a system of rules and guidelines which are enforced through social institutions to govern behavior. And in terms of authority, I do believe that authority would be a person or organization having that power or control in a particular, typically political or administrative sphere. Now, when we think about the law in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a very perplexed attitude towards it because there's a lot of hypocrisy in it. Now, in terms of the enforcement of law in Trinidad and Tobago, who enforces the law? Yes, the police officers enforce the law. However, do we believe that they're doing a good job? Do we trust the police officers? Do we respect the police officers? Some laws that I believe that are not being enforced as well as it should be would be driving without seat belts, driving on the shoulder, in particularly on the South Highway and the Diggle Martin Highway. I'll have you know, I am from the West and that Diggle Martin Highway in the morning, three lanes. There's no such thing as two lanes on that Diggle Martin Highway. Why is that? Where are the police officers on the highway in the morning? Why is it that the police officer will find time to use their siren to get through traffic rather than stop to the side to ensure that the cars are not traveling down the shoulders? Another major issue, drinking and driving. We have lost numerous lives on the roads, yet nothing has been implemented for these lives to be prevented. Statutory rape. This is a major, major, major issue in Trinidad and Tobago. Whether the sex was consented or not, where are the perpetrators? Why we don't have laws that are enforced to ensure that these things aren't happening? Why do we have children making children? And I mean, we are aware of this because the babies are born in the health institutions of Trinidad and Tobago. Why is it that the government hasn't enforced particular laws or regulations to ensure that these things are not happening? Where is it all going wrong? Now, in particularly with the enforcement of the law being done by the police officers, I do believe that the youths in particular, we have a lack of respect for them. Why do we have a lack of respect for them? Well, for starters, respect is something that is earned. You know, you need to give it, and then you will get it. At the end of the day, the police officers, they're not giving it. Therefore, how do they get it? The youths, they're not given respect. Therefore, how do they get respect? Now, this quote, I absolutely love. Knowledge gives you power. Character gives you respect. Yes, you may have knowledge, and that does give you power, exactly what the quote says. But that character, your morals and your values, you earn respect from that. And I do believe that the police officers of Trinidad and Tobago, some of them, they don't possess that character, that willing character for the youth of Trinidad and Tobago to respect them. Now, we wonder exactly why the police officers are not respected in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, for starters, they themselves are indulging in illegal activities, which is very ironic as far as I'm concerned. Also, 
police officers you'll find them cursing why why is it that they could curse in public but a regular citizen can't why is it that they can wear seat belt that they cannot wear seat belt sorry but yet we have to why my question is why and i mean when i open up the lines <coughs> for the callers if any police officer feel could feel free to call in and let me know why let the youths know why let the nation know why y'all cannot wear your seat belts at the end of the day you are a citizen of trinidad and tobago you should respect the law that is the law and you should enforce the law i mean um garth what is your say on the police officers not wearing seat belts i <coughs> i have an issue with it because uh we natasha and i in, in our various travels and we've been to the uk the us and canada i've seen police officers with with more equipment than ours who drive in squad cars and they use their seat belts so just recently we had an accident with police officers chasing a bandit and they both got injured because the car ended up in the what you call that um you know the middle of the highway they ran off the highway and they got injured and um so i agree with you it's is is it's a it's a motor vehicle the, the the seat belt was placed there for a reason and they're supposed to wear it to protect their lives because to protect us they must be protected as well so i agree and natasha what is your say on likewise this? i have i have observed on many occasions um police officers whizzing past you you don't know where they're going but you assume it's they're going to um apprehend a crime in progress or something like that but they are they are driving very recklessly um in their haste to get to where they're going but they are not protecting themselves and it seems very um stupid for the lack of a better word it seems stupid that you would not as an individual far less as a police officer not want to protect yourself while traveling at high speed in a vehicle okay so about the police officers cursing now as a young person observing this how am i supposed to be able to trust a police officer who curses or be able to respect a police officer or an extension his colleagues now i am actually a victim of such behaviors now i'm going to give you this story um word for word so as it happened exactly as it happened so one afternoon in school in my uniform as i will state i am um, what happened right in my school there's a walkway but unfortunately for us we have to battle with the walkway and the cars coming in and out of the school therefore it's limited space for us as the passerby police officer no let me not state a police officer a random car drove into the school no space for me to walk so obviously it's difficult for me to move to the side when i did get a chance to move to the side the car slowed down these were her, these were his exact words why don't you beep out the beeping way <laughs> me being a very passionate person when it comes to <laughs> anything i am somebody i do not stand for disrespect at all i stood there in complete shock could you repeat what he what he said to you in in <laughs> school <laughs> in <laughs> school <laughs> oh <laughs> on holy grounds people mm -hmm. move out the beeping beep way. way beep plenty beeps <laughs> i mean i stood there and i was like wow. Wow. i mean at this point i was not aware that he was a police officer i'm assuming okay this is just a regular gentleman coming into the school maybe a parent so standing there in shock i'm like okay page what are you going to do are you going to run down the car no that probably wouldn't make sense or do i run to the security guard standing to the front of the school and make him lock the gate or make him put down the barrier so said so done ask the security guard you know sir i need to put down this barrier i need to speak to this gentleman urgently security guard knowing me very well he said page leave him alone now please oh gosh not today thing like stuff like that you know i said no mr mr security guard <laughs> i really really want to talk to this man he allowed me barriers down walked up to the car 
Fairy it, angelic. Hold on, stop. Um, I just want to know what what was your motivation to go through all of that just to speak with the gentleman before he had left the compound? Because if you as a girl in school uniform, seventeen ag- years old, against a, 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 an adult, a police officer, a man who is verbally abusive to you, why would you take that risk to to do what you did to to speak to him? About I mean, what as did? I said before, I honestly to not like disrespectful people. I do believe that that was crossing the boundaries, not only for myself, but also for the school. Right, right. And I mean, at this point, I didn't know he was a police officer. Just okay. thought he was a regular parent. So just to give him a heads up, okay, you know, you can't be doing this. This is unacceptable on all levels. Right. So continue with the story. Yes, he closed the gate, bang. <laughs> Walks up to the <laughs> car. Good afternoon, sir. Exactly how I said it just now. Very angelic. He watches me. Afternoon. Said, okay. I explained to him, you know, are you aware that you're on holy grounds and it's unacceptable to be cursing and using obscene language? It's very disrespectful. I don't appreciate it. Stuff like that, right? He proceeds to tell me, I'm a police officer. I could arrest you. Well... <laughs> He was proud to say he was a police officer. He was proud to say he was a police officer. I felt every drop of blood in me rush to my brain. I could not believe he used the lines. I'm a police officer. I could arrest you. (laughs) So my response to him, arrest me for what? Your stupidity? (laughs) For your lack of respect? I was like, I cannot believe you would stoop so low to come and curse a schoolgirl. Somebody who's in their uniform. On a school compound, I found that very, very alarming. And I mean, the fact that he would actually throw back the line, he's a police officer, you just committed a crime. So me being myself, I asked him for his badge number. Obviously, he did not give it to me. I mean, at the end of the day, I saw it as, you know what, Paige? These police officers clearly lost focus somewhere, somewhere along the line. And at the end of the day, as youths, we need to get them back in check because this is unacceptable. And I know that is not the first time a police officer has cursed. I mean, I have heard it on many different occasions, but I do believe it is very unacceptable. And police officers, you'll need to keep in check. So did, did he even try to attempt to apologize? No, he absolutely no apology was given to me. And you know what? I took it as a okay page. So how did you feel? How did you feel inside? Because that would hurt me. You know. Mixed of emotions. Anger, hurt, disappointment. I was very confused as well. I was like, how could a police officer curse a schoolgirl? It makes no sense. To top it off, the passenger that he went to pick up was a, um, a teacher in another school. And I mean, she sat down there, obviously unaware of what took place before so when she saw me approaching the car she looked a little bit confused and then when she heard this story going on you know she probably realized okay maybe he did something wrong another point i raised with him i was like you know adults quick to say the youths this and the youths that and we have no respect for y'all and we like to do everything on our own beat yet you being an adult being somebody in authority of Trinidad and tobago you would look at a youth and curse the youth that makes absolutely no sense that is utter stupidity and i would say plain talk bad manners and a young lady at that you know whether a young man or young lady but i mean a young lady in school uniform it's that's atrocious really it, it really is and i mean anybody listening out there at the end of the day youths especially stand up for your rights do not feel like you do not have a voice because i do believe after i spoke to him yes he may not have apologized but i'm positive he will think twice before cursing somebody again or before even using obscene language or before making the statement i'm a police officer yes you say i'm a police officer what does that mean it doesn't mean that it gives you the right to curse me or in extension any citizen of trinidad and tobago what do you think though page um what would you say to your peers who may be confronted with a situation or similar what is it, um, what kind of quality do they need to be able to, as you say, stand up for their rights in a situation like that or similar? Okay, well, for starters, you have to want to do it. I mean, if you're not very passionate about it and you really don't care, well then, 
it makes no sense you have to be somebody who is willing to take the jamming because i mean the response that you may get may not be the response that you would like to get for example i did not get an apology and i didn't take it upon myself to say um excuse can i get an apology please mm-hmm. no you know so at the end of the day it's something that you should want to do not only for yourself but to show you know that at the end of the day i have a voice i have a right and opinion um i'd like to take this time actually to tell all my friends everybody that knows me all the youths out there to comment on the facebook page i on dependency on what you think about this very alarming story or maybe you could even give me examples of some stories or some instances that took place within your lives no how how do you feel um any any suggestions about to police officers out there who should be exemplars to to you all any message to them at all i would like to tell them to really take a good look at themselves step back for one second look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself do you really want this are you really aware of what your job is in society i mean the youth should be looking up to you they should be able to confine in you with anything and as the way it goes it's not happening and at the end of the day it is your fault and i'm not saying that all police officers are bad this session is not to bash the police officers either rather it's to make the youths aware and to make the public aware of i mean these simple instances that happen within society and we let go on a regular basis and i do believe that at the end of the day a police officer is somebody that should be an exemplar to society somebody that at the end of the day when we see a police officer we should be able to smile and say good afternoon sir good morning ma'am you know that type of thing we don't do that it's because we do not have respect for them most people see a police van they stoop instantly you see a policeman walking along the road watch him now nah. nah, 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 nah. I mean, at the end of the day, those are not the responses you want from society. And I mean, True. as a police officer, growing in society, you should look at the the public, and you know, you should be aware. Okay, am I doing something wrong? To the police officers that you know that try really, really hard, I'd like to commend you for that. But you yourself need to influence your colleagues in doing the right things. At the end of the day you're in charge you need to enforce the law but why why do you think they have this you think it's a uh i'm trying to because i i always try to ask myself i always try to figure out why is it some of them feel they have to behave like that um what you think is the 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 lack of um system in the recruiting process or you think it's because they they were born and bred like that where well, how can we the find an answer is it the quality of the police service what do you think well based on my observations i mean long ago when i was probably like five or six long ago <laughs> 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 i like you <laughs> i mean five long six ago. growing up i hear about policemen you know my my oh instant God. thing would be oh my gosh a police officer you know i'm excited you know, this is somebody who could arrest you that was my main thing so you know while i'm passing public i'll make sure walking i straight speak and span one time now seeing a police officer it's like oh, okay good afternoon sir nice to see you there in public and i think that the culture has changed so much in the police services and i mean i i know personally some police officers retired now and i know some in the service now and completely different attitude towards their job a completely different attitude and i think that honestly needs to be checked out mm-hmm. um i mean the honorable mr Gar- gary griffith at the end of the day i mean he makes the decisions as to what they do what they can't do and i think he needs to ensure that his his members and you know his people within his ministry they're up to a particular standard because as far as i'm see it there is no standard in the police service what about the commissioner of police because mr griffith can do so much but what about the commissioner who is actually in charge of his officers i mean at the end of the day everybody has a say and i do believe that he needs to take more interest in wanting to 
fix this problem because it is a problem and it needs to be solved. If this problem isn't solved, there's no way we could expect any other problem in the country to be solved. For example, school fights, crimes, or any sort of illegal activities. I mean, if the illegal activities are going on within the police services, then where do we stand as a nation? How do we expect other nations and other countries to respect us as a nation? Why are we still called a third world country? Good question. I have one final question on this on this point. Has any have you ever been exposed to a police officer in a different role or capacity? For instance, if an officer comes to your school and talks about whatever, um, have you ever been exposed to that? In terms of them coming to the school, no. Um, I have been exposed to a retired police officer, very calm gentleman. Um, I mean. Or been to like a, a school fair or something where the police service has a booth and you, you get to see what they do and nothing no. like that. No, I haven't. I mean, I have seen police officers in action mm -hmm. numerous times. Um, some of the times I would say that, yes, they handle the situation fairly well. And then other times you'd wonder why are they doing that? You know, why are they provoking the situation more? Is it that they're doing this for sure? Or is it that they're doing it because they really want to do it or they really want to fix the problem? The officer who parted the fight with the young ladies at Mokrapo. I'd like to commend him, by the way. I mean, that takes a lot of bravery because, I mean, as the public, I mean, looking at the fight, as the young people say, things was heated. It was intense, right? And, I mean... I think he understands what his job is and what his role is in society. Hence the reason he took it upon himself. I mean, probably putting all his worries aside, all the fact that he can be severely injured and said, you know what? This is not right. I need to part this fight. No, you know, that's, that's, that's what you're saying there is so interesting because these are school children and he's going to pass up high school children but then he could he has he to could, fear for his life for his life with school children and I think we could elaborate on that after this break yeah. when we come back I wanted you know why is it that you have to be fearful now to intervene when school children are fighting that is amazing you're listening to Andy Pennancy you're listening to young Paige Ribeiro 17 years and she is giving her, her take on law and authority in Trinidad and Tobago. We also have Che and Shona in studio with us. They came here to observe this afternoon. And we really we, we admire that because it's something I would do too. Let's come check out the, 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 the situation, and check the vibe and see what it's like. So when their turn is up, they can make a, a, a very good contribution as well. So you're going to hear from Che in a while when, he, when we return.